How's it going, everybody? Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course again. Do you have one of these inexpensive Baofangs or similar Chinese radio or maybe an older, high-quality handheld like this Kenwood here, uh, and you want to play around with APRS or maybe even packet radio on your HT, something you know portable, on-the-go, and you don't really want to spend the upwards of $400 to get into something like this Yaesu FT3DR. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about this device, the MobiLinked TNC3, a Bluetooth-enabled device that will allow you to do APRS on one of these radios from your phone, a laptop, computer, whatever, and pretty easily, too. All right, let's get started. I noticed today that less than 50% of the people that watch my channel are actually subscribed. So if that's you, I'd appreciate it if you click subscribe now and click that bell. And if you don't like the videos, you can just unsubscribe later, okay? Thank you very much, I appreciate it. So the MobiLink 3 is a terminal node controller. It's basically a glorified sound card. <laughs> this is because this is using something called KISS, keep it simple and then you can add the stupid at the end if you'd like. Uh, this is a Bluetooth enabled TNC that allows you to pair your phone to it and it will pass audio in and out of your phone through the radio, including this radio. It has a USB micro charging port and it has a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio in and out from your radio. And then of course it pairs via Bluetooth. With this, you can bring audio into whichever device you'd like so long as that it has Bluetooth. So if you want to do APRS on your phone that's Bluetooth enabled, simply pair your radio to this device via the cable and then pair it to your phone and that's all there is to it. You can start working TNC based modes like A25 packet and you can also do APRS. One of my favorite things to do with this though is connecting this to my radio, connecting it to my laptop, and then doing WinLink email over packet radio. A really cool little thing if you want a small portable device that you can pack with you to go along with a laptop, to go along with a radio that you're able to connect to email when you're out and about without having an internet connection, for example, pretty cool. Now this is the third iteration of the MobiLinked. This is the TNC3 third iteration. And that allows it, uh, among other upgrades, to connect to iOS devices as well. So you can use this for both your Android and your iOS devices for whatever it is you wanna do. Again, when it's connected to your phone and assuming your phone has an application, that will work. Two good examples are APRS Droid for your Android users, and on the iOS side, there is APRS.fi. And those are applications that will interface directly with this as well. MobiLinked has its own application for both platforms for manually controlling this because there are audio adjustments you can do on this device to get kind of peak performance out of whatever radio you connect it to, which makes it really, really useful, particularly in the case when you're going to like this Kenwood radio, for example. I needed a bit more audio into the radio and out of the radio to get it to work effectively. Simple little job, connect it to my phone, go crazy with the sliders, and that's all there is to it. At the time of recording, the MobiLinked is selling for about $120, which coupling that to a $25 Baofeng, and if you buy a cable, another $20 or so, unless you wanna make a cable. And yeah, you're gonna to need to go from the headphone and microphone jack on the Baofeng into the 3.5, which is a tip ring sleeve uh, for connecting to the device to make the audio go the directions that you want it to do. Of course, you can homebrew that as well, which would you know be a fine way to go to save some money if you wanted to do that. All right, let's do a demonstration of this. I'm gonna connect it to my radio and then my phone, and then we're going to also flip it around and show you what it looks like connecting to my laptop, my tiny little laptop running WinLink. All right, so with the Mobi linked on, it's just a single button press to bring it on. You'll see the blue light there which denotes that it's either trying to connect or it is connected. Uh, you run the app, MobiLink TNC. Now it should just immediately try and pair with the device. It should just see it. And if you click it, 
it'll ask you to connect. You don't have to go through a, a standard pairing option with this. And then sure enough, yeah, there it is. So we can go to audio input settings. That will tell you the audio input. Um, audio output settings, you have to PTT the radio to set that. Power settings, you have multiple different options. This tells you the battery level, battery gauge. Now, KISS parameters, that's where you add things like delay, persistence, and time slot. Generally, you won't have to mess with this with most applications. Modem configuration, you can adjust between 1200 and 9600 baud. Again, you're most likely going to stay in 1200. And then TNC information, and this is where you get your standard firmware versions and whatnot. Let's go ahead and plug it in to the radio and see what we, what we get. All right, so I have the TNC connected via wire. If you made a shorter wire, this would, would be a pretty good idea. I'm going to turn squelch off. And we should start. This is obviously what you need. We're getting APRS data right now. I have it connected to an external antenna just because I'm shooting inside the shack. So I'll go ahead and bring it up. We'll connect to the TNC again. And if we look at the input settings, that's uh, pretty close, but you want it in the green. So I'm going to adjust the volume here. And boom. So now we're in the green, close to the green. Hold on. There, there we go. There we go. Right there, all up in the green. That's what we want. Now, if you want to check your power output or your output, just PTT, or in this case, hit transmit. And then you can adjust it as you need to. And what you want is you want to be able to see the red light turn on and that'll let you know you're keying appropriately and you can see it on the device as well when you're transmitting now there are a couple ways to set up transmit i'm using the simple dirty way which is just turn vox on but you can have your cable key the radio appropriately if you have the wire done up in such a way to do so depending on your radio this is one of them where if you have the appropriate uh tippering sleeve activated for what's pttting the device you'll be able to key the radios you want but let's say you're using vox let's transmit and we get a red light. So we're transmitting right now. Now with the device connected, let's go to aprs.fi. We'll go to TNC and modem. And we've got TNC3 MobiLinked or MobiLinked connected. And we get all kinds of packets. Now I've already gone through the setup process for this, but let me, let me go back and show you what that's all about. Let's go back to the map, go to TNC DSP modem. It may already be connected, but you can disconnect it and it'll say select a TNC or software modem. And it should just automatically identify it and you just click it. And so we're getting raw packets now for what's coming over APRS into the Bluetooth device and then Bluetooth into my phone. And if I go to the map, I should be able to start seeing stations that pop up. And yeah, these are only stations that my my phone can hear and see. And you can show that by hitting filter and you can turn off network and you can do from TNC and all stations or you can change this as you need to. But that will filter out only to what you can hear and you leave this running and you'll get a ton of stations that pop up. All right, now WinLink. This is what really makes this fun. I have my GPD Pocket 2, which is a Windows 10 laptop. My radio is still connected to the Mobi linked and I'm gonna run WinLink. And if you've ever used WinLink before, uh, lots of updates <laughs> you have to do, constantly updating. All right, so let's, let's dive you in here real close. So we're looking at my WinLink uh, device. I'm gonna open a packet WinLink session and we are going to check channel selection. This particular channel is on 145050. So I'm going to do Enter one four five zero five zero. All right, so I'm gonna have him selected, and let's do start. Now we've got red lights here, and we are receiving data. It looks like coming back in, and we have a welcome message, and we are going through the. TNs are the. Oh, there we go. We got a message from Winlink from N. 0MQL. I want to download the check messages. I have that set up just to do that. It's a WinLink setting. By the way, if you're curious how WinLink works or how to operate it, I did a live stream on that. I will post the link in the description or it's up in the card right here. And we'll start downloading. The setup for this is painfully simple. All right, we're disconnected. Let's go up to settings. 
All right, this is all I had to do to set this up is have it in kiss mode. It's normal packet disabled. I point it to the RMS Express, rmsexpress.exe. It is 1200 baud. If you want to screenshot this, um, I'll take a screenshot and then you can, you can use this or you take a screenshot and then you can use these settings for when you set this up on your end. And on my device manager, you should see two serial devices over Bluetooth. And then it just becomes a matter of picking the correct one. And uh, you should be fine at that point. <laughs> but you do have to select the right uh, audio device. In this case, I'm using COM6. I found that it's likely the lower of the two numbers that you use. What message did I get? Two years ago, I got WinLink to work okay. Recently, no luck. Much has changed, I suppose. Watched several YouTube vids to get the current tips. Some were dreadful. Yours was much more helpful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that was from N0MQL. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I really appreciate it. So pretty straightforward. That's all it is to it. Uh, as long as you have a VHF packet station that you can connect to with the device, that's all there is. And, and this is it, right? It's, it's just the radio. Now, I do have a nice antenna connected. If I was outdoors, I would put up like a roll-up J-pole, possibly in a Brie, have your wire connected for this, and then your laptop. And that's all you need. I guess I should do it like that so you see the logo. So what do I think of the little MobiLink device? I quite like it. I bought this in the intention of using it, putting it in a go bag or just with my regular EDC items, and then being able to carry it along when I take my Kenwood, which is fastly becoming one of my preferred handhelds to have on me. Really simple to use, wideband receive, really nice uh, radio there. Now. The price is a bit on the high side, I think, for what it is, because really when it comes down to it is it's a glorified sound interface device. I've done videos before just connecting the Baofeng to my phone via this cable, and that worked okay. The addition of the MobiLink is that you get better sound performance because you can actually go in and adjust the volume control on the receive and transmit side. So it makes it perform a little bit better. And of course, then you can move it around to different radios because you just need the one connector. So you would just change your plugs out and do whatever you'd like that way. Plus it makes it a little bit easier to connect it to a computer. If you're gonna connect another device to a computer, again, you need a cable and then some kind of uh, audio interface. You could go directly into a laptop, but generally I recommend using like a Sabrent USB sound card to be a little bit more effective. And this just is kind of another option because it's over Bluetooth. So if you don't want to have a, a separate sound interface and, and all that goes along with that, you would just use the Bluetooth device to do that, which is its own separate kind of thing. It's a different kind of cool, I guess, that you can just have a laptop sitting, have this uh, you know, Velcro to the back, something like that, and then just have it sitting somewhere, you know, wherever. Maybe you want to have it outside and you want to be inside relatively close for Bluetooth, but you know, that's an option that you could do. Otherwise you'd need a long cable to be able to run that kind of thing. So would I get it? Would I buy it? Yeah, I would buy it. I bought it. Uh, I really like it. It's a cool, it's a cool piece of kit. Like I said, it's, it's a different kind of cool. It's one other layer of capability. Could you still connect the cable directly to your laptop? Sure. You could still do that. And that would be fine. So I'm curious what your thoughts are. Do you have a Mobi linked TNC three, two, or one? Post in the comments below, tell me what you think of the device. Are you using APRS on non-APRS capable devices? How are you doing it? How have you experienced it? Is it effective? Uh, you know, what are the, tr the pitfalls of that? You know, we've talked about the Baofeng having a, kind of a bad squelch tail. So not necessarily the, the best device for APRS. This Kenwood is a far better choice. And for those that are gonna ask, it's the THF6. Not on the market anymore, hard to find, but, but worth it if you do end up finding one. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Thank you so much for watching the Ham Radio Crash Course today. And again, if you could, I'd appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up, subscribe, and click that bell because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, I'll talk to you later. See ya. So if that's you, please skip subscribe. Please skip.